justice and more intelligent, better half, team partner here is not here tonight. So while I will employ my team, you guys. Um, what is social justice? What, am, what in the heck am I going to talk about? Socialism? Social justice. What, what in the heck is social justice? What do you think? That's what I, I said when I was first given this topic. Yes, your hand was up. <laughs> okay. Okay, good answer. Okay, is it socialism? Is socialism what, what the church wants? No. Socialism inhibits our free will. You are made in the image and likeness of God. He gave you a free will. He, he wants you to choose Him freely. Social justice is equal opportunity for rights and resources. Rights, everyone should have equal rights. Be treated fairly, equally. And resources, water, food, shelter. We are, all are not going to drive the same car. Um, thank goodness Christ gave us a very important thing. He gave us the Catholic Church. When he taught us, we didn't have cars, we all had water in our house, uh, or they didn't have water in their house, and uh, you know, things were a lot more primitive, but today we have a lot more resources. And so what he gave us was the church, and what the church has done, the Catholic Church has identified about seven areas of social justice. Um, could you all pass these out, please? Sure. What we're going to do, is we're going to look at these areas and explore. You want to be Christ to others, don't you? What can you do? These are areas where you can be Christ to others. Now, after reading our gospel passage, it's a little scary, but um, hopefully um, we'll be able to see what we can do. Thanks. Yeah, did everybody get one? Okay. Okay, now, so that you kind of understand, let's go with the first one together. This is from the, oh, I should write this up here, too, because you guys might want to find this. United, oops, let me get it down like this. United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. This is... Our, our team of theologians that tell us and guide us. So if, if I went to uh, the USSBC and said, hey, do I have to give away my cloak and my tunic? I don't even have a tunic. They'll help explain it to us. And on the social teachings, let's start. Would anybody like to read that first paragraph there? Um, thank you. Okay. Follow along. The church's social teaching is a rich treasure of wisdom about building a just society and living lives of holiness amidst the challenges of modern society. Modern Catholic social teaching has been articulated through a tradition of papal, conciliar, and episcopal documents. The depth and richness of this tradition can be understood best through a direct reading of these documents. In these brief reflections, we highlight several of the key themes that are at the heart of our Catholic social tradition. Thank you. As you can tell from this paragraph, this is only skimming the surface. So we're just kind of highlighting social justice. <coughs> the first one, and I think the most important, is the life and dignity of the human person. Now, anybody like to read that paragraph? Okay, thanks. The Catholic Church proclaims that human life is sacred and that the dignity of the human person is the foundation of a moral vision for society. This belief is the foundation of all the principles of our social teaching in our society, human life is under direct attack from abortion and euthanasia. Human life is threatened by cloning, <coughs> embryonic stem cell research, and the use of the death penalty. The 
intentional targeting of civilians in war with terrorist attacks is always wrong. Catholic teaching calls on us to work to avoid war. Nations must protect the right to life by finding effective ways to prevent conflicts and resolve them by peaceful means. We believe that every person is precious, that people are more important than things, and that the measure of every institution is whether it threatens or enhances the life and dignity of the human person. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to ask you, after on the next ones we'll divide into our groups again, but I'm going to ask you as a collective group, what can you do personally to respect life and the dignity of life, of all of them. What can we do as a parish? What can we do as a country, a nation? What? What specifically? It's so easy to say, yeah, 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 I, I respect life. You know, oh, gee, my show's on now. No. I, wa I want you to really come up with what you can do. Yes. We can support our local pregnancy care center that pr promotes uh, saving of lives. Yes. Where they have ultrasounds and everything to help the woman decide to save her baby. Very good. Very good. Very important. You took it out of my mouth. And I would just say volunteering the center or being on our board of directors. That's enhancing it. Yes. yes. How about um, if you can't do that, donate to the pregnancy care yes. center, you know? Or tell a friend you know about it. What we want to do is you don't want to just write it off. Anything else we can do for to help promote respect for life? We could sign up for 40 days for life twice a year. Yeah. Because our parish does three days. Okay, okay. Four hours a day. Did any of you um, sign up and are praying for a baby in danger of being aborted? Um, that's something you could do. Spiritually adopt the baby. You know, come up with a, a, a gender and a, a name. And each day, pray that baby will live. Um, anything else? Join the March for Life. Yes, join the March for Life. Whether it's local or in Washington. Right, yeah. Or just pray outside the Planned Parenthood clinic. Yeah. There's so much. Did, did you have your hand or you? Well, you're done. Okay, go ahead. Well, I was just. This this is something I've thought of a long time. To be, if the Catholics and the evangelicals all voted, we would put all pro life people in all our places. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, only about, I read only about 50% even vote. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to, you know, it's one little thing we could do. If, if we That's have, right. If, 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 if all the Catholics and all the evangelicals voted what they believe, like I say, we have. <coughs> it's it's one thing you can do if you know, hey, you can't, you know, you lost both legs and you know can't speak. Maybe what you can do is you can pray a rosary or you can vote. You know, be, be an informed voter. And you can even be chatting with your friends. I don't know, that guy, he is not pro-life. You know, or, I mean, help inform one another. What, what are the real issues? Does that candidate always stick to that subject? Or do they say, oh no, I'm pro-life. But you know, you can get an abortion anytime you want. You know, hey, talk out both sides of your mouth. Maybe choose a different candidate. You know, or bring it out to others. Sometimes our media only brings out certain perspectives. Maybe you could search and get some more facts. What about uh, some of the other things mentioned here? I think life is primary, but what about the dignity of life? What What are we called to do? You know, here's here's a poor kid doesn't get any meals at home, mom and dad are on drugs, or there's no food or whatever, and they come to school. Can that child learn? No. Will that child be a, a good friend to someone? No. Well, what can you do? Well, you can help vote for programs that will help children to receive meals. You can donate to the poor uh, where there's no food. Um, you, 
I don't know if about you, but I have clothes that shrink. I can give those. <laughs> well, I, can, I can give those to Goodwill, and perhaps some fit person will be able to enjoy them. Yeah. A euthanasia is on the other end of life, and yes, there's a lot of states that are saying you no longer have the right to keep an elderly person alive. We decide on when they die, and that's that's not that's not Catholic belief. No, no, how horrible! We as Catholics are called to enhance the dignity of those elderly people, to make sure they're clean, they're fed, to visit them. That lady down the street that doesn't get many, we are called to call her on the phone or bring her the leftover chicken soup. <coughs> we are called. That's who we are. Okay, now we're going to... Oh, yeah, please. I, I found in my mind that um, the more, the harder Yes. That there are very, there are a lot, a high percentage of mm -hmm. Catholics that I've met, they tend to lean their own way on the death topic and death penalty. Yes. I think that there are some circumstances when it's okay or justified in some way or not. So mm -hmm. I think, um, me, me recently, um, taking the time to understand the church's perspective on the death penalty, why it has that perspective, uh -huh. and initiate it to people. I mean, you see here, you hear terrible things on the news, and a lot of times people's response to those things or even worse, you know, what they'd like to see done to those people, you right. know, and just right. initiate a conversation with people about what maybe even their faith says about the death penalty, mm -hmm. but more importantly, why it says what it says. And, what um, I like is how you investigate what the church said, because I used to be kind of think, yeah, string them up, fry them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, kind of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I have gone to confession. <laughs> but, um, I listen now to Pope Francis, and he says they need the opportunity to repent. I'm thinking, yeah, they do. And, and if I go like this gentleman here and study a little more, I hope to become so pro-life that those thoughts don't enter my head. And um, it's very good of you to bring that up because that is being pro-life, very pro-life. Um, some of us are cafeteria Catholics. We pick out certain things in the Catholic religion. We agree to this. And we do as least as possible to get our big toe into heaven. You're missing it. Didn't you hear something tonight on the news about... <sighs> Vermont. Vermont, yeah. I think they want to pass a bill now about abortion that... Um, they're trying to pass one that if the baby isn't viable, you know, um, which means it probably isn't as perfect as you would wish, then it can be killed, a discussion with the doctor and the parent. But now, oh no, we don't even need the discussion if, you know, disposable babies, you know. Well, I'm not ready for one click, you know. <laughs> the next thing will be the disposable adult the disposable handicapped person, the person who doesn't work, I mean, they will broaden it up. So, no, this is not who we are. We respect all life. Whether, whether they're capable of walking, talking, thinking, we will respect them. They are gifts from God. We need to look further into them to see how we can give them their dignity. That's what we are called to do. Um, any more on this? We can remember that everybody does have dignity. You know, you touched on the fact that, yeah. Yeah. you know, about the disposable baby. And mm -hmm. you, in, in the abortion discussion, I hear, and I suppose everybody else does, that some justify some of them by saying, well, the child would have such a horrible life. And you, you know, you have to, you have to consider that the person that says that, saying it from the status of a perfectly healthy human being, is just discounting the dignity that that person might have as they grow older. Uh, you know, I think of Down syndrome children. Yes. Who are we uh -huh. as 
you know, non Down syndrome people mm -hmm. to just to, or to, to even for a moment consider, you know, the kind of dignity that a Down syndrome well, person might have. Right. You know, right. their dignity is just as important as to my them, dignity is. And yes. Even though I can't understand it, it doesn't mean that it's bad or that it's worse for me. The point you brought out that I really like is the Down child, the Down syndrome child, his dignity is as important to him as yours is to you. And we must honor and respect that. Uh, look at some of our third world countries where, you know, they don't have running water. They don't have, uh, some of them, they can't even feed their children. That You know, the little swollen bellies and emaciated arms and, and that. Should we just kill them off? Their life isn't worthwhile. I mean, after all, they don't have a Maserati. They, they don't even have a 12-bedroom house, uh, you know, I mean, uh, how many bricks of gold or banks account? Uh, just kill them off, huh? No, that's not who we are. We need to provide them with things that will help them with dignity. Um, thank you very much. Joyce was here. She'd come up with really good stuff. <laughs> okay. okay, now I thought we could go to this next one, and what we might do is get back in your group. Sometimes it's harder to speak to a whole bunch of people, but if you're just talking to the guy across the table, you can throw a paper wad at him if he doesn't say the right thing, you know, and it's okay. <laughs> so um, let's get back in our groups and. Um, Take the next one. Roll up your paper. We're going to throw that. <laughs> and the next one is called to family, community, and participation. What I'm going to want from you is what can you do personally? What can we do as a parish? What can we do as a nation to promote family, community, participation? Now, I got some cheap things here. Anybody know what these are? Bulletins. Yes. We, the parish of all saints, have bulletins. And sometimes you can find good ideas in here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. My, yeah okay, I'll, I'll just put a few on the on the tables. Let's see. see we'll let yeah, you read that first. Yeah, different all ones. Right. Just Okay, I want Okay. How many families do you see? Yeah. The I'm going to be asking, what did your group come up with? And if you it's need pencil and paper to write these good ideas down, that other Anything people will have different ideas, or you can add to them, or say, yeah, I think that's good, but why not do it here too? What about this group? What did you come up with? How can you promote family, community, or participation? We kind of touched on the community topic a lot. Okay. There's apparently a lady that collects clothing for people in her parish. Nice. I didn't know about that. How nice of you to share that well, with Well, that me. wasn't me, but. <laughs> okay. But you let me know. Yeah. And so, I didn't know about that. Those ones that shrunk for me. Yeah. You know, so I <laughs> work right there. Um, I think you mentioned something. Yeah, vacation Bible school for the yeah. kids. Uh huh. The gobble wobble. Gobble wobble. Perfect. Mm -hmm. fish, fish fries during Lent. Fish fries are coming up. Yeah. Um, Anything else from this table? The relay for life. Okay. All right. Now, did they steal all the great ideas? <laughs> no. Different. Yes. Okay. This is the beauty of our church. We share. What are some of the ideas you came up with? Marriage prep. Marriage prep. Perfect. Really good. And um, we were talking about the men's conference. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. One last year and one coming up. Uh huh. Next week, next Saturday. Anybody? This Saturday. Oh, this, yes. oh, this Saturday. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. And Super Heart Radio and some of the programs mm -hmm. that they offer. Mm -hmm. uh, and as specifically, he mentioned about this doctor. And Dr. How, oh, Dr. Gray. Yeah, he <laughs> humorously yeah. helps mm -hmm. people raise kids <laughs> and uh, get over, I guess, arguments. But also gets great sense. <laughs> what did I miss? Pretty good. What have we just come up with to promote family, community, participation? Family that brings together. 
Thank you. Very good. Yeah. And I was I was promoting the Knights of Columbus. Yeah, a very who, good uh, Christian organization. If, if, if you ever yeah. been to the any, any of Father Meyer's processions, you'll see the Knights of Columbus in, in their regalia with their swords and their uh -huh. tuxedos and whatever. And uh, they donate like over one and a half million hours of labor to the community and the church. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's huge. I mean, we have. I'm part of a council here. Batesville has one. Brookville has one. Aurora has one. Uh, St. Teresa's has one. They have up since Most, Natty, too. Oh yeah. Oh, they're they're, they're all, all over. over. Yeah. There's 33,000 Knights of Columbus members in the state of um, Indiana. And they're and Knights Columbus are our key sponsor for the Catholic Men's Conference on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So anyway, a um, little plug for the Knights. And with that, I'm going to the Kingsman meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is another great men's organization. Any um, other things? I like family that prays together, stays together. Start a practice. Change your habits. Change your life. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else here? Okay, three, rights and responsibilities. Okay, we can do it this way too. <laughs> All right, rights and responsibilities. Catholic tradition teaches that human dignity can be protected and a healthy community can be achieved only if human rights are protected and responsibilities are met. Therefore, every person <coughs> has a fundamental right to life and a right to those things required for human decency. Corresponding to these rights are duties and responsibilities to one another, to our families, and to society at large. What can you do on a personal level, a community level, to promote the rights, not just of ourselves, but to others, and the responsibility we all have? Sometimes it's nice if you can bounce it off of somebody, you know, like, you know, like, a, you know, I could come over here and say, well, let's see. I, I guess I could kind of, you know, maybe vote for people who, uh, y you know, um, kind of <laughs> promote the benefit of all. Um, there might be some hints in the bulletin. There might be. If you want, you can read the bulletin. You can talk to somebody and see if they have some good ideas. And, that might, and you think, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's true. What policies or programs? might you want to participate in or pray for that would enhance the rights of all humans, that they get what's necessary for a decent life. And what responsibilities do we have? What can we do as a community? Then um, I think we should help our senior citizens, you know, especially those in nursing homes. Oh, wow, yes. Well, my grandmother was in Swiss Villa in Beebe, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And she was there for several years. And I'm not bragging, but I am. I was the only one that went down and visited her. Tragically, you probably saw some of our dear citizens that are up in their years that can't really care for themselves. Yeah. And they, they need more than just somebody to cook the meal and mop the floor. Right. They need to visit. Mm -hmm. They need yeah. that personal touch. Yeah. Sometimes I took my dog with me. Oh yeah, they love the dogs. The men loved it, <laughs> and I would show them little commands that she basically and this one man said, "Now you know, that's a good old dog. I used to have one just like it." <laughs> Sharing memories with them mm -hmm. and uh, bringing them out of their dismal lot. Yeah. Be perfect. Yes. That is a dismal nursing home. No offense, but well, it is. you know, anytime you give up your freedoms, it does get pretty dismal. But thank yeah. God we have the Catholic Church to teach us. We don't abandon them. We got to do something. 
And, and if you want to get on the, uh, the call to help seniors, um, we have a Pax, Pax Christi organization that delivers the host to some of our shut-ins that don't get out. Um, what else can we do? It's not just the elderly. It's, it's all rights. Yeah, but building on her idea, I have an and long-term care yeah. in Twin Towers. I uh -huh. try to take her communion every week. Good. And um, keep her in touch with her parish, which was St. Xavier downtown. Uh -huh. And I'm her power of attorney, so all of her mail's coming to me. So I take her mail and try to take her out to lunch occasionally. Uh -huh. and it's, it's a chore, but how good for you to do this. <coughs> you know, and remember in our gospel it says, the gift you, you give, you will receive that measure back. And they're not only just going to give you the measure, they're going to tamp it down, shake it, and make sure you get a full measure. So um, sometimes we even learn from some of our seniors that we visit. We learn, uh, too, and also we look at our own futures, maybe. Another thing you can do is you can be an informed voter. You don't know anybody in the nursing home. You're out of gas, so you can't drive to see them. Your phone don't work, otherwise you call that lady that used to live next to you that's in the nursing home. Okay, what can you do? You can become an informed voter. You can vote that our elderly, our young, our handicapped, all the people who are most vulnerable will be protected by our laws. And that is Christians. We'll dive in there and we will develop organizations or we will do things. Sometimes if, like we say, okay, I'm going to start visiting my aunt in the nursing home once a month. Well, things get in the way. But if we're, if we're all together on this, if we have a little group, and you're doing Tuesday, and you're doing the following Tuesday, and, and you're doing the third Tuesday of the month, well, it's my month. I have to go. I can't let other things get in my way. That might be, and that's why community participation is, it's crucial to keep some of our programs going. And then we talk. Oh man, she liked it so much. He even talked about, he had dog like that. Yeah. So many of them have something they want to share. Something. Loneliness, we need to address that. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, it's kind of getting, I'm moving on. Right, so I'm going to go into options for the poor and the vulnerable. <coughs> Who would like to read that little paragraph there on that? Options for the poor. Then, thank you. A basic moral test is how our most vulnerable members are faring. In a society marred by deepening divisions between rich and poor, our tradition recalls the story of the last judgment and instruct us to put the needs of the poor and vulnerable first. Whoa. Okay. This is a good one, isn't it? <clears throat> what can you as an individual do to help the poor and the vulnerable? Give the food to the poor. Huh? Food, food to the poor. Okay. And only 5% is used for I think I know what you're talking about. Um, he doesn't mean he's out in the street handing out McDonald's and sandwiches. There's an organization called Food for the Poor. Father allowed one priest to come into our church. And I think he was permitted to come in because most of the donations are going to the poor. There are unfortunately are a lot of scam artists out, the, out there and you can be labeled a charitable organization if you keep 90%. So, do you want to donate to that organization? Well, I guess you're helping one person, but wouldn't you really rather help the poor? Investigate your charities that you donate to. Can you make it a regular thing? If it doesn't hurt, you're not giving. Remember in the gospel, what good is it, you know, to invite people to dinner when you know they're going to invite you. What, what good is that? You, you haven't gained nothing. So what good is it if it doesn't hurt? 
if you only give from your excess? No. Okay, so we can donate to charitable organizations. What else can we do? I think in, in times of like really bad weather, snow, ice rain, yeah. you know, shelters, check on the elderly. Yes. Just check give on. them a phone call. Yeah, just a phone call. Yeah, just checking. Did you dig out yet? Or whatever, you know. Yeah, are you are you doing okay? Or are you alive? Is the heat working? The electric's on. Yeah, check on them. And you know what? Just checking on them. If everything's fine, that isn't the important thing. The important thing is you cared. You cared to call. And that opens up a bigger wealth to them. Much bigger than just, you know, nothing. I, I, I mean, we need, to, we need to connect with one another. Poor and vulnerable. What about the food pantries? Anybody ever gone to the food pantry? We, I think we had a kitchen mission. And is it the gobble wobble that contributes a lot to our food pantries? We have one in North Dearborn. And I think we have another one with like Sunman. And I think they split the proceeds. So you don't know how to give to the poor. You know how to run. Aha, gobble wobble. <laughs> you know, there's something for everybody in this Christian religion here, our Catholics here. What about the homeless? What are we going to do about them? The poor and the vulnerable. They came to Bible school two years ago. Did they really? And they were encouraged to give them away, and my kids gave one to a man outside of the Reds game. Uh -huh. That it was not forgotten. It. No. How excited he was yes. to get that bag. He like downed his apple uh -huh. sauce and was like, it was like Christmas. And your yeah. children witnessed this. Yeah. I bet that will stick with them mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. They may grow up to be good Christians mm -hmm. and further help the homeless. So sometimes it's the little things you do, and also the parents, I'm sure they didn't drive the car themselves, right? <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> right? sometimes it's the parents, the grandparents, or the people behind them that help teach them what we do for our poor, our homeless. Um, what about a uh, mission trip? Has anybody ever been on a mission trip? Um, yes? Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what, what? I'm just saying this. I have. Sorry, the microphone's right there. I don't want to be like overly loud. Oh, it's okay. Yes, I've been on multiple mission trips. And we're going on one here in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Where are we going? Uh, this year we're going to Wheeling, West Virginia. Uh, huh? This will be my second mission trip to App the Appalachia region. Wow. If you're not familiar with Appalachia, it is a very, very uh, poor uh, region of um, our country. Mm -hmm. uh, and their environment and communities are, are just destroyed on a daily basis uh, due to coal mining companies. And uh, they, I mean, they have multiple methods uh, to access coal. And uh, for one example, mound top removal is one method, and they'll just blow the tops of mounds to smithereens, and it just destroys these valleys and mm -hmm. communities that live uh, live there. And a lot of them just so many villages don't have running water. Many don't have. Uh, it's it's just a whole another level of, of that many people think in, the, especially in our typical middle class uh, working society, think that it's like a third world problem. But there's many families and communities experience in your own backyard. Um, so it's very eye-opening for our youth and our chaperones. Uh, our, our prior trips have been, I also did in Appalachia, that was my first ever mission trip when I was in college, uh, was to uh, West Virginia. But we've gone to uh, Sumter, South Carolina, we helped with hurricane relief. Mm -hmm. um, just, I mean, it, it, it really is eye-opening to see like, I, we were helping this one family there model home, their uh, mobile home, which was their actual home. They lived in a, in a trailer. It had been completely flooded, and so they had been living in like an extended stay, like a hotel for over a year, because in, insurance companies, some 
you, they just can't, when they have that much disaster in one centralized yeah. area, they can't get to, so you're essentially put on a waiting list. So they're moving back, and so, but they will provide what they, like these storage pods, so it's like a storage unit, and you literally everything, all of the belongings for this family fit in one storage unit, everything they own. And we're helping, it was like, it was a beautiful day because it was their, the renovations had been finished, so we, all of our kids were helping them move back in, mm -hmm. and we were helping them get set up, and we are helping this, this mom, uh, and they, it was a family of five, I think they had uh, three kids, and we were unpacking their kitchen stuff, and we're literally unpacking styrofoam cups from like Krish's and Wendy's, mm -hmm. like that's what, that is, those, those, those are their mm -hmm. cups, like, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, that's what, of everything that they kept, like, you think if something happens to your house, like, what are you going to say? What are you going to pack up? And for Stein these film cups. Yeah, like exactly plastic yeah. silverware. I mean that. Uh, but it's it's so fantastic because these families are so full of joy. Like they're so happy and so like, oh my gosh, they're just adorable. So like it's just so good, especially for the youth to see that like, even though you don't have, as you say, the mother out here, the twelve mm -hmm. bedroom house or whatever, mm -hmm. if you can still be as as happy as. Possible. So, Thank you very much for your yeah. witness. Very yeah, yeah. Okay, can any of you go on mission trips? Well, some of you are well, members, but, yeah. but yeah, but can you help finance a mission trip, or could you help somebody else? You know, come up. He's, I'm, I'm, Joyce ain't here. She would have come up with everything. I need you guys to help me think. And when, see, when we share things with one another, we come up with ideas, and it'd be easier to commit rather than to go home and think, nice play us. Uh, let's see, what's my favorite show? I think I'll watch this. You know. <laughs> okay, what are you going to do to help the poor and the vulnerable? Sam's going on the mission trip. Yes. Something just as simple as, as um, you know, the church always has a giving tree at Christmas. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and, um, whenever there's a giving tree, I always usually like to try to make it through the office. Just because, wow. you know, I do yeah. have the means to do that. My son, yes. he's an assistant principal over in Florence, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, there's a lot of kids in his school you know, um, they have, um, some of the teachers take stuff to, you know, get the kids that are going to have a Christmas or whatever. Mm -hmm. and if there's any leftover or anything like that, I come to bring them home so I can, you know, mm -hmm. make up bags and stuff for the kids at school that they're not fortunate enough to, mm -hmm. to get. So I think just something like that, that to me that's, that's a simple thing to do. Simple? You know, yes. because you're still helping. Yes, mm -hmm. so. and and can you imagine the child that would not have received anything, and they got a toy? Yeah. I mean, yeah. how excited they would be! It'd be even nice if they knew that nice lady who's a Christian believes in God. Yeah. <laughs> but they might later on, just even if they didn't know that, they might think, "When I get big, I'm going to wrap up presents for people too." So your witness and your example are ways you can help the poor and the vulnerable. What about clothes and coats and yeah. stuff like that? Yeah, don't, don't we have uh, coats for the, the needy? And we have all kind of things, all kind of things. What's in your area? What can you do? OK, so I'm real busy, and I just can't do that, and I feel dumb, and I don't talk very good, and what other excuse can I use? You know, come on, you can come up with excuses. Can you go to the Adoration Chapel and for one hour pray for someone you know who is poor or vulnerable? Or pray for a cause? That's what you can do. Everybody has a responsibility to do something, something. Start small because you will do it and then proceed. Um, what about soup kitchens, spiritual adoptions, Habitat for Humanity? OK, you remodeled all those kitchen cabinets that you think look like, mm, really dated. Bring them to Restore. 
They'll go in a house and someone will say, oh, kitchen cabinets? Oh, whoa! You will make someone delighted. Okay. Then you can also go over and, you know, say, hey, look, I know you got a paint job going on. Would you like me to take the kids while you're painting? Or maybe what you want to do is you want to say, hey, I got an old pair of pants. I can do the trim work or whatever. Or maybe while your neighbor's moving, you might say, you want to use my truck? Or I'll drive the truck, you know. <laughs> Are you going to make the chili for them moving, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> you going to mow grass for that lady that has a, a brace on her leg and kind of goes like this? You know, while you got your mower out, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, in this area, a lot of us have tractors, and I, I might be saying something wrong. You might not want to go mow her pasture. The opportunity, well put, the opportunities are out there. Search for them, come up with them. Well, if you know someone that doesn't drive, you can pick them up and take them. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Mass, confession, class. Make sure it fits with your schedule, otherwise you'll, you know, it'll get old, you know. But yes, any little thing you do can help the poor and the vulnerable. And you give somebody a ride to Mass, you care. More than the sacraments, Jesus came to me and brought me there. You are Christ to them. And that probably means more than if the... Uh, what do you call it? Catch a ride comes and picks you up. Uh, catch a ride is uh, if people of means that don't have transportation, you have to call catch a ride, and you have to wait. You have to call three weeks in advance, and you got, and then they come, and you have to be ready. And at the end of your drive, even if you don't walk, and, and <laughs> they all complain about it, but if you can give them a ride, you care. Yeah, or loan them a textbook as long as you get it back. Okay, next one. The dignity of work and the rights of worker. The economy must serve people, not the other way around. Work is more than a way to make a living. It's a form of continuing participation in God's creation. If the dignity of work is to be protected, then the basic rights of workers must be respected. The right to produce productive work, to decent and fair wages, to the organization and joining of unions, to private property, and to encourage <coughs> initiatives. Oh my, what are we going to do on that? Well, that's a hard one, ain't it? You want to get in your groups and discuss it, or maybe just come out with something? Help someone get a job. Hey, there, there you go. Help somebody get a job. Lots of times that can happen. You yeah. know something and you know the job. Mm -hmm. Or you know the person and you give them a recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> How about help them make up a resume? Yeah. Maybe you know some of the skills they didn't realize they had. Or you got real good social skills, you know. You know, I saw you welding. I know you, you have welding skills, you know. <laughs> You used to work with kids, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I know you've helped out at our church before. Real good parish festival worker. We can put that in your resume. You know? Um, the recommendations and job. Okay, there's other things you can do. Um, you know somebody that wants to get a job <coughs> and they, you just look at them and you think, yeah, you're going to need some help. Maybe they need a pair of, of shoes with the safety toe in them. Maybe you can do that. Um, maybe you can help them pick a, out an interview suit. You know what I mean by the interview suit? Mm -hmm. um, or, I don't know, some ladies might want to go and get their, their hairstyle. They have dress for success. Yes. I can donate business uh -huh. or clothes. Now, isn't that nice how she just knows that? I bet you some of us didn't know that. Thank you. You hit your hand up? I was just you were mentioning all these, uh, things that people know and can yeah. do and stuff. Uh, a lot of times you can help someone start a business. 
you know, if they got some real talent, you know, that uh -huh. or something. And, uh, too many people are afraid to do that. that. There are individual things we can do, community things and heroic things we can do. Pick yours. Pick yours. What about when you go to a restaurant? Do you tip? I see some people shaking their thank you to your server. Hey, there you go. The please and thank you might be more important than the uh, and yeah, then yeah, and tip. But it might be more important. And um, realize we would not be where we are today if it weren't for the many, many people who have helped us build our community, our families, and and everything. We wouldn't have these tables, so we wouldn't have our clothes, our cars. I mean, it takes a whole village to raise a child, but it takes a community and a country to raise up Christian communities like the Catholic Church. Yeah. Um, I heard something the other day that said that uh, people are more likely to complain about a bad service or a bad employee than they are to go out of the way to build someone up and tell a, a superior boss, like, hey, David's doing a great job, or mm -hmm. my waitress <coughs> bringing to light instances that are negative and people that are failing and not doing so well, but to the people that are, are doing good and, and go out of your way to do it. You hear Christ here, right here, sitting on the table. Be Christ to others. Lift them up. Uh, this is so true. And it's, it's also good with our children. You might have a wild one that drives you nuts. And one time you do one thing good, that's when you have to get, wow, you put your shoes away this evening. It's a miracle. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh my. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I better not comment on that. <laughs> I'm sure we could get into some little stories. Well, the other thing, if you're yeah. a manager and you have people reporting to you, yeah. I personally think it's important you treat them with dignity and respect. And mm -hmm. trust. Yes. Yes. They're yeah. Not, you're like a rain, right? That, that's right. Treat them like they're less than. Exactly. They're doing a service for you. Yes. They are equal. You're in a different position. But if you respect the work they do, and sometimes if you listen to them, well, I don't know what in the heck they do. They just sit in the office and push the pencils and stuff. But I'm the one that does the work. You know. <laughs> they need to learn, you know, you're doing their job, they can, you know, if you're the guy that um, is the one out there shoveling, filling the ditch, you need to know there are other people that are helping you also. Be respectful of your bosses and that as you would your subordinates. You go the other way with that also. Okay. If you are a boss, be respectful of the people that work for you. Yes. There's opportunity of... Um, in a position that I had for a very long time, getting a lot of young kids, mm -hmm. first time jobs, uh -huh. work for me. Uh huh. And just taking. <laughs> very time. stressful. But, yeah. you know, it's just a matter of taking the time if they're not doing something like that. Uh -huh. Not to humiliate them or anything in front of other employees, uh -huh. or take them aside and teach them what they're supposed yeah. to be doing in the And that mm -hmm. installs, you know, Somebody from a very young age teaching them on their job. Good trace. This is the way. This is the way you need to do it. Actually, I'm going right. You respect them, and then we turn around and respect you as, mm -hmm. a, as a boss. The mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, looks like time is moving on. Can we so. take a break? Oh yeah, I forgot. Let's take a break. Sorry.